Fox family, Drew here. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are having a great day so far. I have a really exciting and fun video for you guys today because today we are gonna be focusing on one decor style and that is bohemian decor. I am a humongous fan of boho style rooms. There's different elements from that kind of style that I pick and choose from because I personally feel like I don't have one style that I decorate with. I like eclectic, I like vintage, I like boho, I sometimes like modern, I like farmhouse. I typically pull bits and pieces from lots of different styles for my own personal space. Today we're going to be focusing on bohemian style decor and something that I always, always, always notice in boho style rooms or inspiration pictures that are more bohemian style is there are so many plants and you guys always comment on my plants and I am so excited because today's video is actually sponsored by Bloomscape. Now as many of you guys know, I have never really had a green thumb. I am not the best when it comes to keeping plants alive. However, I have gotten these plants from Bloomscape over probably two months ago and they are going so strong. It actually ended up picking the Kimberly Queen Fern, which is a smaller size plant. And then I also got the Bird of Paradise, which is this one right here that you guys see. And if you guys have never heard of Bloomscape, they are an online site that you can actually order plants from and they are shipped directly to your door. They're already potted. They're just basically ready to be put in your space and look amazing. And when shopping on the site, you can actually sort based on size, difficulty, light level, pet friendliness, and if they are an air cleanser. So there's lots of different like features that you can click on through their site to kind of decipher which plants might work best for your personal space. So after you place your order, you get your box from Bloomscape and you guys, the packaging was immaculate. It is 100% recyclable, which is amazing. And the way that they crafted this packaging just makes the plant like ship to you perfectly. And they're stored in greenhouses until they are shipped. So they're top, top quality. And I actually wanted to wait like a month or two prior to talking about the brand on my channel to make sure that the plants were amazing quality. And as you can see, this plant's freaking awesome. Like I'm obsessed with the way that this looks in my room. Another feature that I loved is that each plant comes with a miniature postcard that gives you all the details on how you should care for this plant where you should put it, the best lighting area, just all of the basically tips and tricks to keeping this plant looking incredible. I personally think Bloomscape is an amazing option for purchasing plants because they have so many different options and you can scroll and look through every single plant option on one webpage rather than having to walk through like an entire nursery or like a big box location, which I think is great. You can kind of see everything there and it's also super, super convenient. Everything's shipped directly to your house. So if you would like to transform your workspace or your home with Bloomscape, use the link in the description box below and you can get 20% off of your order and have plants shipped directly to your home that are pre-potted and look incredible. Plants are super crucial in bohemian style decor, but not only are the plants crucial, the decor is also crucial. And that is exactly what we're going to be DIYing today. So let's go ahead and get started with these really fun boho style room decor DIY ideas. Jumping right on into our first project, I'm using this Ikea glass vessel, and I'm also gonna be using some woven cane, some scissors, and a hot glue gun. So what I wanna do is basically measure how much of this jar I want to have the woven cane material applied. Now I got this at the local cane shop, which you guys have probably seen in my video now. I am very thankful to have a local cane shop in Los Angeles, and I cut this to six inches in width, and it just happened to fit perfectly around the entire vessel. I'm also cutting off the little tails on each side, basically to create a rectangle of cane. Now I'm going to be using the Gorilla Hot Glue Sticks, which I will link below for you guys. All the materials will be linked that I use in this entire video. Um, but however, you guys know that the Gorilla Hot Glue Sticks, they stick pretty well to glass. However, they're not the most secure in the world. So when I secured this cane down, it was perfect for this. However, when I went back in a little bit here and add the reed spline, it wasn't the most secure. So I went around, added it. Here's my little reed spline here. This is traditionally used, I believe, to like finish off the edges of cane. Um, you're supposed to kind of hammer it into a groove. However, I decided to wrap it around to kind of finish off that edge and give it a nice completed look. However, the issue arose right where those tails were because they were so pressurized that they kind of popped up. So I decided to go with some E6000 glue and kind of add it on the underside. And then I taped it down to dry. And this guy's really held it. I let it dry for a full 24 hours. I also applied some very heavy like candlestick marble holders on the inside while it dried as well. And then once it was done, it was a perfect little vessel. Okay. 
I don't know about you guys, but whenever I think of boho decor, I always remember super cute, like bohemian style rustic wall hangings. So I grabbed some of my Sculpey clay from my stash. I literally bought the 10 pound box because I use clay so much. And I used a rolling pin that I specifically use for my clay. And I just rolled this out to about a quarter inch thick. And then I'm going to be using a glass cup here and I'm gonna be cutting out some circular shapes. So this is my first circle shape here. I'm gonna tap it around the edges just to make sure it's nice and smooth. And I'm also gonna cut it in half using an X-Acto knife and a ruler. I'm then going in and kind of halfway pressing down my cup to create a circular indent because I wanna create almost like a rainbow magnet shape. So I'm kind of freehanding this shape and cutting it out. I personally love the organic look of like a freehand piece of clay. So it doesn't really have to be perfect, guys. I just created this magnet shape with the half circle on top and the two little spokes on the bottom. And I also used the archway on the inside. So I basically just cut a ton of different shapes. So I was able to kind of decide how I wanted to lay this out once all of the shapes were fully cut. When you're working on a circle cut as well, I suggest putting it on parchment paper and holding the blade steady while moving the parchment paper. It creates a much cleaner circle. So here I am laying out the design I want for this wall hanging. And I kind of found out that this pattern was the one I liked. And I used a plastic needle here just to poke holes wherever I wanted the pieces to connect. Now, also keep in mind, guys, that I took a photo of this. That way I was able to put it back perfectly afterwards. So just poke a hole through so you have a little connection points for all of your clay pieces. And I'm gonna pop this onto a baking sheet here and bake it in the oven for 15 minutes or as your clay is instructed to do so. Once that came out of the oven, I mixed together this orange folk art color with a little bit of green because it's actually going to kind of neutralize the tone. The orange is super, super bright. So I wanted a more neutral kind of rusty color and I went ahead and painted all of the pieces that I'm using for my wall hanging with two full coats of this paint. While those coats were drying, I grabbed some aluminum wire from my stash. This is like a very, very thick aluminum wire. And I wrapped it a couple times around a glue stick to create some circular pieces. And then I used my industrial scissors, or you can use jewelry nips, whatever you have, to cut these apart to create little rings, which I'm going to use to connect all of my clay pieces. So I just created as many rings as I needed for all of those clay sections. Once that second coat was applied, I pulled out my gilded brass paint, which you guys have seen me use so many times. And I actually lined all of the edges with the brass because I feel like it would just give it a nice finished look on the edge and kind of make it look a little bit more expensive. And maybe that it wasn't made from clay and it was more so made from like metal or something just really, really pretty. So I added the brass around all of the edges for a little pop of metallic. Once that brass is added, you're just going to basically take your rings and just connect them together. So I open them up pretty wide, slip my two pieces on there, and then close them with my finger. The nice thing about aluminum wire is it's super malleable, so you don't really have to use much force at all. So I connected all of my pieces together with the silver rings. Now, something else I think that really could be cute if I was to do this again was to actually use a little bit of chain in between each. So they kind of had like a little bit of space between each connection point, because I do feel like they came a little close in contact however I didn't mind it too much after I painted them with brass paint so I painted all of my rings afterwards because I didn't have gold wire painted it with that brass paint there thread a little bit of thread through the top and then tied it into a knot to hang it on the wall So I've created a couple of macrame planters in the past. However, this one is so cute, but super simple. So what I'm gonna start off with is 16 three yard sections of macrame cording. And I'm also grabbing this additional piece here, creating a loop out of it, as you can see on the side. And then I'm going to be wrapping it probably about five or six times. It's just going to be creating the bottom portion of our planter, which the plant is going to sit on. So once you finish wrapping, you're gonna pull your string through the loop that you created originally, and then go to the tail on the other side and just pull everything in into the middle. This basically kind of creates like this barrel shaped knot, which keeps everything inside nice and clean and finished off. So next what I'm gonna be doing is sectioning off four strands in four different directions. And what we're gonna be doing here is creating a square knot. So about four inches down, I placed the right strand over, the left strand went under the right and then through the loop and you're gonna be creating a square knot. So here's the first section, left strand goes over, right goes 
under and then up through the hole. This is going to create our first square knot. And all we're gonna be doing in this entire project is square knots. There are no other knots at all. So once you have this down, you are good to go. So I'm creating another little section here of square knots. I'm gonna be doing two full knots, then applying a wooden bead to the middle two strands and then creating a square knot around it. So the right goes over, left strand goes under and then up through the loop. And then you're gonna repeat the steps, but make sure that your left strand then goes over, as you can see here, and then right strand goes under and up through the loop. That's going to finish off and kind of secure your bead in place. And then I'm gonna be doing one more of those knots. And then I'm gonna work on all of the other sections as well, creating two square knots, then adding a bead and then two more square knots. Once you have that done, you're going to split up each of your little sections into two different strands and then conjoin them with their neighboring strands. So here I'm going to start a new square knot section here, making sure that you use two middle strands and then you're doing the square knot over the top of them. So you're going to create one square knot first and we're basically going to be doing the same exact pattern that we did prior with two square knots slipping on the bead and then we're going to do another square knot to secure that on. Um, but it's basically two square knots, bead, two square knots, just as we did with the beginning, but you're going to be conjoined joining the sections of your first knots and creating a new section. Once you finish our second round, we're gonna do that one more time by taking and splitting our four strand sections and conjoining them with the neighboring sections, creating a square knot or two of them, applying a bead and then doing one square knot, applying another bead, one square knot and applying a third bead and then finishing it off with two square knots. This little beaded section here is gonna probably be the most exposed part of the planter. So I wanted it to have a lot of detail without needing to actually macrame for hours. That's really what I love about this planter design that I came up with is that there's a lot of strands that are not actually macrame -ed. However, you get the look of macrame. So I placed my plant here from Bloomscape inside, which is what I want to put in this planter. I held it up, it looked incredible, and I kind of found where I wanted the loop to be. So what I did was I strung through all of the strings here through this wooden ring, which I'll link below. I found this on Amazon and I'm going to be wrapping it as shown here. And I also did the little technique where I kind of created a loop first. That way I can put my strand through, pull the tail on the other side and then pull all of the strands into the middle where you can easily cut this off and you have a nice finished look and then just cut off all of your extra tail pieces there. And that finishes off your macrame beaded planter. And last but not least, this is my first ever lampshade DIY, but I am just in love with it. I'm using a lampshade and some macrame cording, and I'm going to go ahead and use some Fabri-Tac adhesive to freehand a half circle shape onto the top of this lampshade. And then I'm gonna go ahead and secure some macrame cord on the top of that Fabri-Tac adhesive. And by the way, guys, this adhesive just works really, really amazing for fabric on fabric contact. And this lampshade is like a linen fabric, so works perfectly when applying the macrame cording on there. So what I'm doing is I'm kind of filling in the entire circle shape that we created. And I highly suggest leaving longer tails than what I did at the top because I actually ended up going in and gluing them on the inside and it was a bit challenging. However, moving on to our next step, I'm gonna be using hot glue for this section and I'm gonna go around and add fringe all the way around this scallop. However, I'm not gonna be making the fringe kind of go out from the circle. It's all gonna be falling downward. So every single strand I'm gonna be gluing on is falling down instead of kind of outwards, if you could imagine, a sun shape. This is everything's kind of falling downwards on the lampshade. And then what I'm gonna go in and do is add some Fabri-Tac adhesive over that section where we applied the fringe pieces just to kind of cover up that uglier edge. And I also added a second row of the macrame cording over the top just to make a nice clean finish on this little scallop here. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna unravel all of your fringe pieces by twisting them and just unraveling all of the strands that are within your little twisted rope. 
Fast forwarding a bit, here are three full scallop sections completely done on this lampshade and it looks crazy at the moment. However, we'll fix that. This is where I was talking about where you should have a little bit of excess um, actual macrame cord on the top as opposed to me trying to kind of glue down these threads literally to the inside. I suggest leaving maybe two to three inches. That way you can easily go ahead and wrap it around and just glue your excess threads on the inside so it looks nice and finished from the outside. So here I am on the outside giving this a literal haircut. This was actual hair. I felt like it was hanging on the lampshade and I'm going to be cutting this in the same exact shape that we have the half circle in. So I kind of want this fringe to just still sit on the lampshade and have a little bit at the bottom of the shade exposed. However, I want it to have that scallop shape just to give it a nice bit of movement. And I definitely feel like this kind of shape is very boho. So it matches the vibe that we're going for. So here's our first little scallop done. And then I'm going in to our second one and giving it a haircut as well, cutting off any additional threads that we don't need. And this is all three of them looking super cute. And I used a fork actually to go in and just kind of comb out and loosen every single strand. So you have a nice fluffy fringe. Now keep in mind, some strands might fall out since it, they weren't like particularly hot glued in perfectly. However, doesn't matter at all. I had these beads in my stash forever, probably like six or seven years. And I just thought I would add a couple of beads to the top of the lampshade here to give that super boho vibe. I feel like beading is super bohemian. I love the look of it. I think it's stunning and it just enhances the overall look of this lampshade a bit more. So instead of sewing them on, I just added a dot of Fabri-Tac adhesive and then placed a little bead on there. You're going to work in a 360 around the shade and add all of your scallops and that finishes off this bohemian style lampshade. Alrighty guys, so those are my projects for you today. I hope that you enjoyed them. And I definitely feel like these projects can all be used in like one boho space if you're super bohemian driven, but they can also be kind of mixed up with other decor and they look incredible in so many different styles, which is something I just love. I think that the macrame planter and the lampshade, but also that rattan jar, you guys, like that was so cute. I'm just excited about all of the projects. So yeah, make sure to also add some plants to your space using Bloomscape. You guys can check the link in the description box below to get 20% off of your order and get an amazing plant like this one here and the other one that I featured in the macrame planter. I'm not going to take up any much more of your time today. I will catch you guys all in my next video. Have an amazing rest of your day guys and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for brand new home decor and DIY content every single week. I'll catch you next time. Bye!